Today, the Arts Commission Public Art Committee and Metro Arts staff are joining by conference call. In a moment, we will call roll of all members present. Due to damage to their office, Metro Nashville Network was not able to broadcast this meeting live, but recordings will be distributed following the meeting and Metro Arts staff will coordinate with MNN to broadcast the recording at a later date if possible. All votes will be made today by roll call. All action items voted on at today's meeting will be reconfirmed at the next in-person meeting of the committee. Now, I encourage all participants on this call to stay muted when not talking and to use the raise hand WebEx function if you would like to speak. Now, if you, like me, were unfamiliar with that feature, here's how it works. At the bottom of your screen, you should see a button with three little dots that says more. If you select more, there is, you'll see the option to raise your hand. When you raise your hand, please also unmute your microphone so we can hear you. Once I've called on you and you've spoken, please select the lower hand option. You have to go back through and actually lower your hand. Um, and then re-mute your microphone. I'm gonna give you all a second to just get familiar with that feature. Um, Cause this is how we'll be making um, I, I think I think Paul has a question or needs some effort. I don't see that feature, sadly. Uh, you see the buttons at the bottom of your screen, the mute button. Blue, red, red with an X, the three little dots, and I open it up and it says copy event link, audio connection, speaker, microphone, and camera. Okay. Mine also shows up that way, Paul. Um, um, this, is, this is IT. Um, if you open your participants view, if you look in the lower right hand corner, you should see a small little hand. I do. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Sharda. You're welcome. Um, okay, if if you're have if any committee members are having technical difficulties with any of these functions, please let me know before we proceed. And in that case, I'm going to head and I'm going to go ahead and call this meeting to order. Um, for each committee member, I will say your name and are you present, and I need you to respond present. Omari Booker, are you present? Present. David John Walker, are you present? Yes, I'm present. Paul Collins, are you present? Present. And Alejandro, I'm sorry, I don't have your last name in the participant list, but are you present? Yes, I'm present. Is that all of the panelists? Perfect. I need a motion to adopt the following statement. The meeting agenda constitutes essential business of this body and meeting electronically is necessary to protect the health, safety, and welfare of Tennesseans considering the COVID-19 outbreak and is permitted under the governor's executive order number 16. We need someone to propose a motion to this effect. So please raise your hand and I will call on you. Once I call on you, please state your name for the record and then make the motion. So do I have a motion? David. Hi, this is David Walker. I'm making a motion to open. Super. Paul, do I have a second? I have a second. Perfect. Now we all have to um, vote on this via roll call. Um, so Omari, do you, uh, do you approve this motion? I approve. Alejandro, do you approve this motion? Yes, I approve. David John Walker, do you approve this motion? I approve. Paul Collins, do you approve? I approve. And I, Nikki Kaufman, chair of the committee, also approve. 
now before we hit the sort of official business of this meeting, I would like to invite this committee to join together in a moment of silent acknowledgement and reflection on current events. Thank you. We will now consider our first action item regarding the Artist Emergency Relief Fund. I will pass it off to Metro Arts for a presentation on the initiative. Thank you, Nikki. And this will be Ann Wesley, who's up first. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I was turning on a fan because I'm locked in a very warm room. <laughs> Ann Wesley, are well, you ready? And did we want to do minutes or maybe I'm out of order? What were those something oh, we typically do? before so we, we get into action? We um, are not approving minutes for our virtual meeting um, just because of the circumstances. And so we will uh, retroactively approve all of those when next okay. we join together. All right, yeah, I just I so saw, it, saw it on the screen for a second. Okay, all right. Well, I will jump right into our public art relief project, local artwork acquisition. Um, good afternoon. Um, my name, of course, is Ann Leslie Owens. I'm public art project manager at Metro Arts. And today I am bringing a proposal to you for a public art relief project based on local artwork acquisition. We are bringing this to you today as this project provides a way for Metro Arts to quickly respond to artists impacted by the March 3rd tornado, as well as by the COVID-19 precautions that closed arts businesses and canceled many art exhibits. You may recall that uh, Metro's Arts' local artwork acquisitions make up what we call the Artworks Collection. This is our, and do you want to go on to the next um, slide? You may recall that Metro Arts' local artwork acquisitions make up what we call the Artworks Collection. This is our collection of 2D and 3D wall hung artworks created by Davidson County artists and installed in Metro buildings. These artworks have been purchased by Metro Arts using percent for art funds and are included in the Metro Public Art Collection. This expansion of our collection with wall hung artwork came as a recommendation in the 2017 Public Art Community Investment Plan as a way to diversify the collection, both in terms of artwork, but also artists represented. Many of the artists now in the collection primarily have a studio or gallery practice and might otherwise have few opportunities to engage with the public art collection. Our first phase of the artworks collection included the historic Metro Courthouse in 2017 and the Metro Office Building in 2018. Based on the very positive response that we received to the program from artists and Metro staff in these buildings and the public, we have always intended to pursue additional local artwork acquisitions. Go on to the next slide. Exactly what that might look like um, is yet to be determined, but we certainly have support from other Metro departments. General Services was our main contact with the courthouse and the Metro office building projects. Future opportunities with general services could include the installation of artwork in additional metro buildings that general services maintains. It could even include something new, like a public art lending program, whereby departments could check out an artwork and it would be on loan to them for one to two years. We've also been in conversation with the public library to explore what opportunities there are for public art to build on the tremendous community outreach and programming that the library is already providing. Some of the ideas that we have discussed with the library include um, an art lending program where patrons could check out art much in the same way that they check out books. Um, we've also talked about um, printing art there in the library. 
um, that would be from local artists. Um, a, a speaker series where um, groups, community groups could check out an artist to, to speak uh, with them. We have also talked about programs on local art and collecting that could take place at the library um, and also lesson plans and reading lists that would contribute to people's understanding and appreciation um, of the arts. The library um, in recent conversations has even offered a dedicated staff person to work with us. So that brings us to our action item. The next slide. Um, staff requests an acquisition budget of up to $100,000 from percent funds and the approval to pursue partnerships with the Metro Public Library and general services for artwork and for artwork uh, placement and programming. I'm sorry, I've, yes. Um, and of course, we would update the pack once details are con confirmed. Thank you so much, Ann Leslie. Thank you. I would now like to open the floor up to questions. If you have a question, please use the raise hand feature and I would be glad to invite your question to the floor. Okay, if there are no questions, I would entertain a motion. Please raise your hand and I will call on you. Paul. I make a motion to uh, approve uh, the request. Perfect, Paul, thank you. Do I have a second? David? Um, I second that uh, motion. Thank you. Well, any other comments or questions? Seeing, yes, Paul? I didn't know if you had any initial ideas on uh, thematic connection or uh, um, uh, anyway, how to con how to connect this uh, or differentiate it from um, other efforts that you you guys uh, have made to collect our work. Whether that's not necessary. Yeah, I don't know that we really talked about it um, amongst you know Van and Caroline and going myself. And going? I mean. Oh. David, I'm going to have you put your your microphone back on mute if you don't. Mind. All right, sorry. David, I think you're dancing right now. <laughs> <laughs> but certainly, um, Paul, it could be you know responses to to 2020. It could be more of a, a neighborhood focus, perhaps you know, based on the different branches. You know, if we were to to work closely with the library, so you know, we, we've got lots of different options, and we would um, bring those to you. I think also. Um, that's a great question. And some of it, you know, what we've initially been wrestling with depends on um, what we end up pursuing first. I think with the lending library, that is one that's particularly exciting um, and new and innovative, although it will take more time and there's just going to be a natural kind of trial and error process, um, especially when we're lending out um, assets of a certain value, thinking that? about the fragility of the artwork or, you doing? know, so I think we've been kind of toying with, do we maybe start off with prints first, um, something that's part of the series and we would do a call based on that, or do we wanna just kind of open up the field and say, um, you know, submit viable options uh, for Metro Arts to consider, or like Ann Leslie mentioned, is it neighborhood-based? I think a lot of it kind of decide, depends on um, how we end up tying into uh, possible existing programming at the library. So I think that just adds an extra punch when we can kind of tie an artist or artworks back to um, programming or, or um, kind of subject matter focuses that the library is kind of doubling down on from their side of things. Um, but it's definitely a work in progress. And I think today, uh, because we're trying to move things so quickly, um, just to get, you know, money into the hands of local artists, we realize that we still have a lot of questions um, that need answers. Um, but we just wanted to know that we have both the blessing of the pack and approval for at least this chunk of money that we can start 
taking action towards. Perfect. Thank you, Van. Any other questions? Well, we have a motion and a second. So now we're going to run through a roll call vote. Uh, Omari? Um, I vote aye. Yeah, I vote um, to uh, approve. Super, thank you. Alejandro? Approve. David? Approve. Paul? Approve. And I, Nikki, vote to approve as well. Thank you, guys. Moving on to our next action item, we will now consider our first action item regarding the NEA Creativity Connects grant, and I will pass it off to Metro Arts for a presentation on the initiative. And that will be me. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, retroactively, I'll introduce myself again. I'm Van Marvella. I am our Public Art Manager at Metro Arts. Um, and today I'm bringing back some more information and specifics around the um, Creativity Connects grant that Metro Arts received from the NEA, uh, which we applied for in hopes of investing that um, grant award into the Madison community. And if uh, I guess our newer members will not know that this happened, but our uh, older PAC members uh, may remember that before maternity leave, we had two of our learning lab artists come, or three, excuse me, to the pack and present, uh, present proposals for how they wanted to implement some of their skills um, and tactics they learned during learning lab. And Kristen Chapman uh, Gibbons, who's now Kristen Chapman, I uh, proposed in working with this grant and this scope of work um, to implement some of the work um, that we needed done in Madison relating to this particular grant. Um, so for those of you who are new and those of you who couldn't remember what happened in September 2019, if it, your life depended on it like mine, uh, we'll do a quick recap. The goals of this grant um, and our grant application was to commission an artist or artist to design um, a asset, a community asset mapping project that was going to look at both the um, environmental you know, um, assets that Madison has uh, that need preservation or um, need to be kind of redefined or things that are lacking that um, creatives living and working in Madison feel that they need in order to um, economically thrive there. We're also really interested in learning who is working in Madison um, and how those artists and creatives are working and um, what the desire for future engagement or investment might be um, and really taking the lead of what we hear from those who are working and living in Madison um, because it is such a large neighborhood community. Um, Metro Arts has kind of always historically struggled to understand who all is there and how we can best use our um, investment to meet Madison specific needs. The award amount that we received from the NEA is 85,000. The uh, Metro Arts is also matching that grant with an additional 85,000. And our match uh, will come from the uh, Matthew Mazada Permanent Percent for Public Art Project that is also slated for Madison. And you'll hear more about that um, project and how that match is manifesting in uh, the next month or two. As I mentioned before, PAC did approve um, commissioning Kristen Chapman to execute this work um, and to develop it as well. And that was back in September 2019. And this is essential business because our deadline for the grant closeout is very quickly approaching. And we do have to have all of that kind of executed and tidied up by December 2020. The next slide. So like many individuals and organizations, um, the March tornado and the COVID pandemic 
uh, momentarily stopped us in our tracks. Our initial plan for this grant was to host a series of workshops um, where Kristen would facilitate interviews and would use some of her storytelling skills to both collect feedback from individuals, but also message that out. Um, because we cannot have public convenience, um, and definitely not any of that size, we did hit the pause button for uh, several weeks, and Chris and I really spent a lot of time reflecting on how we felt like we needed to pivot to respond to our new reality, both uh, addressing the issues with public gatherings, but also recognizing that um, between the tornado and COVID, a lot of those assets that we would be mapping may not exist or may exist in a totally different way. And that there's this feeling of um, helplessness to a degree, how to kind of honor those businesses or public spaces that we're not sure the fate of, and how can we both give people Kind of a cathartic opportunity to express themselves, but also um, provide artists with economic support and then still walk away meeting the deliverables of this grant, which is, uh, you know, an environmental survey of the creative assets, both um, buildings, programs, places in Madison. And so with that in mind, we decided that kind of our, our new or adapted goals would be to provide local artists, especially those who are now unemployed, with funding opportunities. How can we support Madison uh, local businesses? And how do we need to now redefine the idea of public space and how we interact with one another? And um, Kristen really felt like it was very important to her as the project lead and design um, artists designing this project that we not just provide an artist or artists and creatives with an outlet to kind of verbalize this support uh, for businesses and public spaces, but that kind of um, the general public or uh, non artist also needed kind of that same opportunity. So we have a working title of love letters to Madison. I'll admit we don't love love letters to Madison. So if anybody has a brilliant idea or suggestion for a better title, we would be our heroes. So please let me know uh, if you need something to percolate on. That's a good one because Kristen and I, we've got no ideas. So for now, love letters to Madison. And we can go to the next slide. I'll give you some more details about how we are going to achieve those new goals. So basically, we've broken it up into three parts. Um, the first part are artist projects. So of that 85,000, 60 will go towards temporary artworks. So the way we will um, both structure the call to artists and select the artists uh, is through this proposal for quote unquote love letters um, about a business or a public space, whether it is still in existence or not. Um, it can be in any creative medium. So we're talking dance, um, visual arts, music. Um, I'm blinking on others, but you understand where I'm going. Uh, before submitting their proposal, applicants must complete a survey about the economic housing and creative space needs in Madison, as well as how they have been affected by COVID and the tornado. Um, and then once we get those submissions, and we imagine that some of these will be kind of a preview to what is uh, likely going to be a, a larger project. So if it's a song, we don't expect someone to provide us a full composition, but maybe it is um, kind of the first few minutes or a proposal for a choreographed dance as opposed to actually developing um, and executing that for the submission. I think we were um, very cautious of asking people to create something uh, without compensation. So um, we will 
we will kind of receive those applications knowing that uh, the intention is to scale them to this larger, more public platform. So of the artists that we select, um, they will be stipend for their work and um, it will be structured very similarly to that for those of you who are familiar with that program. We can go to the next slide. So the second part is this public campaign. So um, $7,000 of the budget and um, 12,500, which um, has partially already been spent um, Kristen's artist fees up until this point. Um, but we, this is our kind of public call for Love Letters to Madison via social media campaign. So these will be residents who don't necessarily identify as an artist or aren't engaging in a creative practice. However, they do want to kind of offer or vocalize their love and support for a Madison-based business or public space. Uh, this one is particularly exciting because Kristen, um, as the lead artist, will read through those public letters and identify a handful that um, she is particularly interested in uh, creating her own large scale display and interpretation of. So some initial ideas that she's had have been a, uh, a drive through art exhibit, um, printing, if, if a love letter was to a uh, local restaurant, printing haikus, um, influenced by that letter on the takeout bags of that restaurant. So each person who is picking up their order then is kind of engaged in this um, whimsical guerrilla style campaign um, in addition to billboards and live stream events and other ideas. Um, and we will definitely bring those back to this body um, once we know what those um, large scale projects may include. And then our third and final bit, which we can go to the next slide. We can advance the slides, thank you. Um, part three, so it's our policy report. Um, not as glamorous, but definitely uh, super critical. Um, so this budget is 5,500 and we are hoping to work with the art consultants, uh, Todd Bressy and um, Meredith McKinley, who helped us um, create the community, the public art community investment plan back in 2016. So we have reached out to them in hopes that they will help us analyze current land use policies as well as affordable housing and economic conditions for creatives in Madison. Um, and they will kind of do this work while we are also collecting the surveys from artists who have applied to the call and they will combine both the policies that they have researched, um, both existing and kind of future policies that exist on a national level that we can implement in Madison, and um, combine that and synthesize that with this data survey. Um, and we will put together a full report um, for recommendations about how Metro Arts um, and Council um, and even private businesses can make informed and thoughtful investments in the creative vitality of Madison. I know that that was a lot. So if we need to go back to any of the three parts, if folks have questions, I am absolutely happy to do so. We will open the floor for questions. Does anyone have questions for Van? Okay, seeing none, I would um, entertain a motion that PAC approve the staff recommendations for the NEA Creativity Connects grant. Would someone like to make that motion, Paul? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion that we accept the uh, PAC uh, uh, recommendations. Thank you. Do I have a second on that? Alejandro? Second. Perfect. Now we will um, entertain any comments. 
Anyone have any comments? Yeah, I think this sounds really exciting. Thank you. And um, I, I deeply, deeply value the opinions and expertise and ideas of this committee. So if at any point, um, you know, you think of an artist that we should definitely be engaging with who's based in Madison or um, any other kind of thoughts, ideas, whatnot, please reach out. Um, we want this to be collaborative and we really rely on your expertise as artists um, and leaders in this space in Nashville. Anyone else? Okay, seeing no further comments, we will um, go ahead and have a roll call vote on approval of the motion. Omari? I approve. Alejandro? I think you accidentally muted yourself when you meant to unmute yourself. Sorry. Yes, I approve. Excellent. David? I approve. Paul? And I, Nikki Kaufman, approve as well. Thank you very much. Metro Art staff will now update us on other public art initiatives. And really quickly, uh, because both updates and Leslie will give, I wanted to let the PAC know that these updates are kind of our most uh, time sensitive or essential business updates and that the staff and I are working uh, very quickly to pull together kind of a comprehensive update for spring early summer projects um, because typically we are able to give kind of more robust updates I just wanted to let you know that we're pulling together um, kind of a as overview of of what's been happening over the last few months um, since we have not met as regularly due to uh, the strange new world we live in. <laughs> so with that, um, and Leslie, I will hand it back to you. All right, thank you. Um, as Van, you know, these are some public art projects that have been um, uh, are, you know, time sensitive, you know, they've been in the news um, and I want you all to know what the, the latest is on them in, in the event that you get questions about them. Um, the first um, is um, related to the historic Metro Courthouse. Um, as um, you probably have, have seen in the news, the May 30th demonstrations at the courthouse did result in some fire damage and graffiti damage um, to not only the courthouse um, itself, but also Public Square Park, and this extended to um, witness walls. Um, staff um, went down, assessed um, the situation on June 1st, um, um, and has taken these steps um, with the artworks collection that I had mentioned previously in this meeting at the courthouse. Um, we looked at everything. Um, we did not see any damage. It appears as though everything was unharmed. However, as we uh, spoke with general services and talked about um, what they were planning to do with um, taking air out and bringing air back in with a very low humidity level um, and all of the um, repair work that was going to be doing and the people in and out of the building, we decided it would be best to move those artworks, the entire collection from the ground and first floor into temporary storage. So they um, are safe and in storage right now. We will move them back as soon as as it is safe to do so and all the courthouse artists um, have been notified about this. Um, and then witness walls um, are public artwork um, just outside of the courthouse, uh, west of the courthouse there within Public Square Park. It did um, have some spray paint um, added to that. Um, I have been in contact with artist Walter Hood. Um, and he, you know, approves of our approach to having a conservator um, come in. So we are working with general services and finance and legal regarding um, a possible insurance claim, but we will get that spray paint um, removed from witness walls. Grace, if you want to go to the next slide. 
And then you have um, probably seen um, some of the media attention about our I Voted sticker contest. Um, this is a project that I had the pleasure of working on with Emily Waltenball and Attilio Murga um, on our staff. And this was a, um, a new partnership for us with the Davidson County Election Commission. It was a contest to design a sticker um, that we opened up to Davidson County students in grades 7 through 12. Um, students submitted um, their designs and we received um, 75 of them, which we were delighted with the turnout given everything that's been going on this year. Um, a selection panel um, of which um, David John Walker was a part, thank you, um, narrowed that um, down to eight designs. And then we opened it up to the public. Um, Davidson County residents um, cast their votes. Nearly 2,500 people participated um, in this online voting and the winning design is the one you see there by a Hume Fog, Rising Senior, Milk and Nagasi. And we are um, currently um, working on getting those printed and they will be available um, beginning with the early voting locations in, in mid July. So they'll be available for the August and November elections. And we've actually received so much um, positive feedback about it. Um, we've received a lot of requests for um, posters. So we're looking into the possibility um, oftentimes for our public art projects, we have some kind of giveaway souvenir, so we might be able to do that for this project, but there cer certainly has been interest in it. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you. Anything else from the staff? Any questions for the staff regarding this presentation? Omari? I would just like to say um, yeah, great work to the to you all that have been in, involved in those different projects during, you know, during the time that we're that we're in. They're all all important and necessary. And um, yeah, I kind of I appreciate the the navigating of conserving things that might be destroyed without um, condemning the people that are doing some destruction that is also necessary. So so yeah, I appreciate that. And and also that I voted. Or that we voted, this looks looks awesome. Yeah, so great, good work. Thank you, Emily. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Amari. And well, and Leslie and I did uh, presentations today. I, I have to brag on the full public art team um, and just say that they have been so dedicated to continuing to um, make progress and move their projects forward. Um, and Trey and Atilio have, yeah, just. Um, been fabulous in addition to Ian Leslie, and I think we are all working really hard to kind of pivot and adapt um, to better meet the needs of our community. And I'm just I'm very very proud of um, yeah the public art team's dedication to moving that forward. So shout out to everybody. I also want to take a second, um, Van, to shout out. Grace, who had about Absolutely. 12 seconds of getting to know Metro Arts before COVID and has seamlessly and brilliantly figured out how to manage these online meetings in a way that we all feel prepared and, and that we have our questions answered and we can move forward with our business. So shout out to Grace. She's, she's the cool operator that makes it all possible behind the scenes. <laughs> Thank you guys. Y'all are too sweet. I'm just supporting your great work. Well, and thank you to our committee members who spent time with us today. We really thank you guys you for, for, for uh, showing up today. Um, and that completes the business of this meeting. And so without further ado, I adjourn the public art committee meeting. <laughs>